Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, we've made um, significant progress in our expansion plans and we thought it was time to share with the community. Um, I guess number one, we we're pleased to announce the purchase of a 37,509 meter cube forest license from Carrier Lumber. Um, this license, this is, this is a part of our expansion plan. This is one of the steps, one of the, uh, and it's a major step along the way. We're real, real happy with this. Um, this license allows, allows us to start planning and developing to better supply local manufacturing and to create opportunities for expansion. A uh, forest lice license was paid for in cash from the VCF reserve funds. Uh, we've inherited roads in our new operating area that are in good shape and that will allow us to access future developments. Um, we did not acquire any civil culture liabilities in this acquisition or we didn't acquire any blocks that we have to take care of. Um, we basically made a deal with Carrier that they would keep this liability and we would pay them a lump sum as they're already in, it's already in their system, it was really easy for them just to, just to carry on and they were fine with that, so that was good. Um, the, so the combined cost of the forest license with the civil culture liability is 1.57 million. Um, the second thing we want to announce is that um, Cary Lumber and the Belmont Community Forest have reached a 20-year agreement, a wood, tra a wood trading agreement, that would see logs flowing in both directions. Um, we have started this agreement by tendering wood in the fall. Um, so, and Carrier was a successful bidder, so we've been delivering logs to Carrier as part of the deal for the past uh, few months. We now have the opportunity to purchase logs from Carrier um, that would flow back to Belmont from, from, their, from their Robson Valley and Prince George operations. So basically anything they don't manufacture in their mill, we have, we have an opportunity to purchase that wood. And we're gonna, now we can start, now that this is signed, now we have, we have extra operating area with different species, plus we have wood that we can purchase from carrier of the same type of species and composition. Now we can offer this to companies that are already established and to new companies that want to set up. So now we can really start negotiating with these companies instead of just uh, in, um, you can, you, can only, you, can only, you can only negotiate so much when you don't have something. And then it just, you know, it's not there, right? So it's, I learned that early and it was easy just to get so far and the idea is good. Okay, well, when we get it, we'll talk more. So now that that, that time has now come. So I'm happy to see that. And we're, and then the third announcement is that we're extremely happy to announce the addition of Adrian Vanderswan coming onto the VCF management staff. Um, Adrian has worked in the Valley for 30 plus years and, he's, uh, and his experience, knowledge and background is going to be a huge asset to our, to our staff. Um, both Janie and I have worked with Adrian in the past um, and the way we've set this up I think it's going to be a near seamless transition. He's been on with us for a week, a week now and it's, it's been great. It's taken the pressure off both of us so. and it's a pretty busy time so it's been wonderful. So we still have work to do as the, as the end goal of transforming this new forest license to, uh, to a community forest has not been completed. We're still in um, close talks with the government and we're hopeful that this will happen shortly. We'll definitely keep you posted. Um, by securing the forest license and the possibility of wood volume coming from Carrier's operations, we can start more, start more meaningful negotiations with manufacturing companies. Um, before the deal was made, we, we just didn't have the volume to, to, for such talks. We, didn't, we, had, we had a good volume, but we didn't have enough specific wood types or species to really support very much. We had lots of everything. 
which is but not but not not enough volume to support anything. Definitely not for expansion. So now we have that. So as a part of this, as a part of this deal, Carrier's already offered us some cedar volume, um, but we 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 just couldn't accept it because we just don't have a home for it yet. But it's a it's a good example, and it was a it was a good volume. So if we can set up something here, we can access all that volume and and bring it back to Belmont for manufacturing. And part of the deal, though, how we think it is that we have wood going from Belmont to Carrier. If they can stop part way back, get a get a load of something, cedar hemlock, Douglas fir, the the species they don't utilize, then that's a win, and it's actually you know it'll be cheaper for us because the the truck will be hauling loaded for the most part both ways. So this is part of the economics behind the deal. So we're still op optimistic that we'll be successful in trading our forest license for community forests. Um, when this time comes, we, we've talked about holding a celebration and invite all the parties that, were, that, have, that have spent so much time and effort to get this done. Uh, people such as, such as Jeanette and her council, uh, Shirley Bond, the forest minister, Thompson, McBride Community Forest, uh, the Ministry of Forest Staff, uh, Carrier Lumber, and you know previous administration and uh, VCF board members and current, of course, as well. Um, I'd like to thank Bill Cordoban and Terry Kuzma of Carrier for sticking with this deal um, over the past three plus years of negotiation. A lot of it was hard negotiations. Um, they didn't have to do this. It was. This, no, one was, no one was forcing their hand in this, um, so we appreciate that, and we see a great partnership over the long term, and I guess the ball is now in our court to make this thing uh, sing. Thank you, Craig. And firstly, I want to uh, congratulate this, the um, Vailmont Community Forest, the board, and the staff for all of your negotiations, but more importantly than that, I want to uh, thank all of you for your diligence and the care that you've shown for the well-being of uh, the Vailmont residents in all of your very hard work, and I really appreciate that, and so does Council. And I know that the community does as well. You know, um, prior to um, the Vailmont Community Forest, things looked uh, quite bleak. And when the mill closed, and I know that the softwood lumber agreement had much to do with that, as well as uh, the uh, lack of... Um, fiber and tenure, they just couldn't keep going. So it got changed hands and changed hands and uh, we um, had nothing until we got the community forest. And so I'm very proud of the board and the staff for your achievements for the well-being of Vailmount and yourselves too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Craig, it's a big day, three big announcements on the uh, community forest. Why don't you tell us about the first one? Um, well, we're pretty excited about what are all of our accomplishments to date. Um, the, first, the first announcement was the purchase of a 37,509 uh, forest license um, with areas around that adjoin to our, community, our current community forest. Um, Secondly, is an agreement with Carrier Lumber, a 20-year agreement that, um, that would see logs flowing in both directions. Um, we've actually already started that the agreement, and um, it seems to be working fine. And the third announcement is uh, the hiring of Adrian van der Zwan as a, he'll be an operations supervisor. He worked with Carrier Lumber, and he, and he came as a part of the deal with the license. Okay. Well, let's talk about, first of all, the purchase of the license. So it was purchased from Carrier. And what does that do for the, the territory that we have here for the Vailmont Community Forest now? Well, it basically doubles our territory and doubles our cut, a little bit over double. Um, so that's the one thing first off. And the second is it gives us a better supply of uh, different 
tree species and different wood types that we can offer for local manufacturing. So there's lots of, there's lots of cedar, uh, lots of different types of cedar, saw logs, shake, you know, that's all great for, for value added and uh, local employment. So let, let's talk about that. So what does this do for the Belmont economy? Well, it gives us, it gives us a better base of which to, um, of which to attract companies to come in and set up uh, manufacturing. It, um, it also allows us to keep our contractors busier. We have our, we have our own roads, logging, civil culture, uh, development contractors. And it just gives us that much more volume to keep them busy. So, and will we be able to, to maintain that size of a cut? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's it's renewable. It's um, it's set to last indefinitely. Okay. So, yes. so let's talk about the second thing, which is uh, uh, logs going both ways. And can you explain that a little bit more? The idea is the um, is that we would we would offer for tender to anybody we choose um, a certain uh, 40,000 meters a year and that we would tender out for top dollar and so that's what we, the Velmont Community Forest would offer up and in return we would have um, the right to purchase wood from carrier or anything that they don't manufacture which is uh, like Douglas fir, cedar, hemlock um, oversized uh, spruce, balsam, and pine. They can only take to about a 20, 22 inch log. So anything over that, which we have quite a bit of, we can keep here and manufacture. And we've made a deal to for for small um, small SPF spruce, balsam, pine under 12 inches, so that we can so we can retain that from our blocks as well. And they would actually offer up more of that from their own cut. So that's so that gives us a base for uh, a small camp mill or a small saw log mill. Okay. Now going hand in hand with your purchase of the land down in the industrial park there, how do you see this working together or do you? Well it's all part of the big puzzle right? Now we have um, we have the land, um, we have the scales up and running, we, we're basically ready to go um, now with the cut, we have all this extra volume that we can offer finally because we couldn't really offer it and we just didn't have enough volume to offer um, enough volume and enough specific wood types for, for specialty mills before just because our cut wasn't big enough and because we didn't have some of that volume in our, in our uh, original community forest. But now we have all that so now it's us, up to us to negotiate and to try to figure out what's the best fit and what works economically and, and get something going. All right, so you've got the land, you've got the facilities, now you've got the extra product and now it's just a question of, you know, the sky's the limit basically as to what you can do uh, in this area. Yeah, two point, for sure it is, for sure it is. There's lots of, lots of potential out there and there's lots of, and we're, we're talking to lots of people. People are interested, which is great, which is really good to see, so we're, yeah. The next end, next uh, next end of negotiations is starting right away. So, uh, for those people who may be thinking, well, maybe we can have a, a a big mill here again, is that a possibility or no? Not not a not a large mill like it was in the past. I mean, in the past, they had um, it was a spruce, balsam, pine saw log saw log mill. They produced uh, dimensional lumber. I, I don't think that's going to happen. We don't have enough wood to to supply such a mill for one, and you and you have to pay top dollar to get those logs because everybody wants them. So I I don't see something like that happening. I see more of a a whole bunch of smaller specialized mills that kind of support each other. So I think that's the future, and it's kind of it's kind of going back to the past. Uh, I don't know, but maybe 30 years ago. There was there were, small, there were smaller mills scattered all across the whole Robson Valley, and the bigger mills came in, the Zeelers and the I used to be Clearwood or Clearwater uh, Clearwater Lumber or Timber Products. They came in and bought up all the all the smaller guys, and they all kind of went away. And then we had just two big mills basically, 
and then when the and they were old and worn out and they ended up being non-economic and they shut down and then we had nothing so now it's kind of I think to me it's turning full circle where we're back to a whole bunch of smaller guys that's probably a better fit for us so a better economic model for for forestry in this time it is and it's probably better for Vermont too really because those the 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 two towns McBride and Vermont they're up and down like a yo-yo with these mills the lumber markets were good that they were on top of the world the lumber markets fell the whole town fell so if you have a whole bunch of smaller outfits if the cedar saw log industry falls well something else will pick it up and there won't be such a dramatic hit to the local economy. So that's what we're hoping will happen. You mentioned McBride. Now McBride's been having their, their own reviews and challenges there. How does their, at this point they haven't purchased the license from Carrier yet. I know they're working on it. Does that affect Belmont's licenses? I mean, how does it all work together? I mean, we're, we're pretty much partners in this valley. We are. Um, when we've been negotiating for just about three and a half years together, um, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect us and it hasn't affected us because they're basically seen as two, bi two separate business deals. So we're not linked. Um, so we're going ahead because they're, they're having a, f a few issues they're having to work out and that's fine. They're taking a bit of a break and it's for probably a good thing. So it's basically it's separate, two separate deals. It doesn't affect us right now. We, you know, we're hoping the best for them, and we can. We're hoping and we're trying to help them um, figure out the direction they want to go. So, is there some synergy benefits in having both communities having the license? Do we benefit from that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think how, so. how so? Well, they have the more wood, the better. Locally controlled, for one. Um, for two, you get that much more. If, um, if McBride gets more volume, just like we will, they, um, there's more that they ha they'll have the same kind of deal as we do with Carrier. It'll just be more of that specific piece, piece size and, and uh, type and volume species that we can offer up to local mills and we can share. Because they have, they have their post and rail mills and we have our shake mill and both co communities have saw log, cedar saw log. So if we can log a cedar block, send all the post and rail there, all the shake here and the cedar saw logs get shared, that, that works, right? It's there. Nothing saying we can't get another cedar saw log mill or even a post and rail mill or something, right? But, but the, the synergy, synergies are there to, to support each other. So we're, we're hopeful that they have success. And the last thing is uh, the bringing on of Adrian Vetter's one. You want to talk about why that was done and what he brings to the organization? Well, Adrian's worked for basically for that forest license for just about 30 years, really, probably a good 25 years. So he he um, it was actually his option whether he wanted to stay with Carrier and and get transferred over to the to their other license or to stay with us. And he, he opted to stay with us, um, which is great. I've worked with Adrian. I worked with Adrian with Car when I worked with Carrier for five years. And Janie worked with Adrian in the past. So it, everybody knows everybody. We know everybody's strengths. Um, it's, it's a great fit for us, especially with the log yard. If it gets, if it gets busier and busier, we're going to need someone who can help out with that. I mean, that's, and that's what we expected to get busier yet, so we're, we're very happy to have him come on board. What's the next step for VCF? Well, we haven't finished the deal yet. The part of the deal was to get this forest license and get it converted into a community forest. Kind of the same thing that we have, and that just gives that much more options um, than just ease of, ease of our... Uh, of our logging and road building and operations in general just makes it so much easier and it's actually set up better the cedar in the forest license in the appraisal world it just doesn't work very well it's all set for cedar saw log and most of our cedar is not cedar saw log so it does, so there's some challenges there so we have to get this thing turned into a community forest and that's what we're working on um, 
once we get that, you know, we've already started talking with other companies about setting up. We've all that getting this forest license allows us to start everything else because we have it now. So we're we're, we're off to the races.